Welcome everyone to another live episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. My name is Dorn Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach. And today we're going to talk about three simple steps for upping your income in a down market. Upping your income in a down market. So I know a lot of you guys, if you're anything like the loan officers I've been talking to recently, have been struggling to just maintain the status quo, let alone create growth. If you're any like anything like a lot of the mortgage pros I'm talking to, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unrest, a lot of frustration and disappointment around how things are going this year in comparison to the way things were last year. If you've been in the business for a number of years, chances are you're in a significant regression pattern in your income. Chances are you're making a fraction of what you made in the last few years. And there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, for many loan officers I've been talking to, they feel like they don't have control of their pipeline. They don't have control of their deal flow. They're waiting for the phone to ring versus making the phone ring. They may have many pre-approvals, but getting them under contract is another story. Uh, they may be finding it exceedingly difficult to be getting meaningful relationships established with even mediocre realtors, let alone top producing realtors. Everyone's clamoring after the same realtor population. Many of the you know, mediocre or so-so realtors are even getting out of the business after they begin their ass kick for the last eight to nine, 10 months. And so it's been a very difficult market shift for many in this business. Perhaps you can relate. Perhaps you can relate to the uncertainty, the worry, the anxiety, the fear around the unknown for the future. Perhaps you can relate to the frustration, the disappointment around spinning your wheels and either staying in the same spot or going backwards. Perhaps you can relate to the feeling of feeling like you're having to cram your life in a smaller budget box, living in, I can't afford a prison. You know what I'm talking about, right? We can't afford to do this. We can't afford to do that. Remember that five-star vacation last year? Well, now it's going to be the two-star. Maybe we're just staying at home or we're traveling local, or maybe we're not doing any vacations. I'm telling you, there's so many loan officers I'm talking to that are really struggling right now. And my heart goes out to you if you're in that place. Uh, just know that you're not alone. And that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals are reaching out to us and seeking our expertise and our proven system. Because this is not an easy code to crack. And it's certainly not something you can easily Google search. And it's certainly not something that's easy to just reinvent the wheel and you know throw some yogurt at the fan hoping something sticks, right? It's something that is a bit like if you've never played around with the Rubik's Cube and all of a sudden you're trying to solve the Rubik's Cube. And meanwhile, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month that you don't solve it, you're bleeding financially. That is not a good feeling, right? To be drowning and having more bills stacking up while the you know revenue is drying up, that's not a fun feeling. So again, my heart goes out to you if you're in that experience. Today, we're going to talk about how to kick that problem in the teeth and how to move forward powerfully, and how to gain control of your business, how to grab the driver's seat uh, steering wheel position in your business, and to drive your business versus drifting, to make the phone ring versus waiting for the phone to ring. So we're going to talk about three simple steps today. And the first step that I want to highlight is this. I want you guys to start to shift your perspective. Shift your perspective. From seeing the adversity as struggle, as strife, as stress, as a challenge that seems to be insurmountable. And I want you to see it as an opportunity. I want you to start to see that adversity as an opportunity. You know, anytime there's a down market, there's lots of opportunity that most people in that down market just don't have the goggles to see because they're focusing on lack, limitation, and scarcity. They're focusing on the why me. They're focusing on the oh shit. They're focusing on all these things that steal their peace and steal their power. And it feels like it's a have to versus a get to. I have to go back to work in the face of working longer and harder for less. I have to figure out how to you know, get my business up. I have to go after these realtors that I don't really want to work with. I have to grind and work more hours. And it feels very heavy laden. Perhaps you can relate. And so adversity doesn't feel like opportunity in many cases. It feels like a special kind of suck, 
right? Like it's sucking your joy, it's sucking your peace, it's sucking your confidence, it's sucking your mojo, it's sucking your joy. And so it's a total joy suck because we are seeing it from the wrong perspective. We're seeing it as a, you know, if we think about it kind of like the grinding stone, right? The grinding stone is frankly a neutral device. You can either use it to pulverize something or to polish something. It's all a matter of perspective. It's all a matter of proper positioning. So is this market shift right now, if you're really honest with yourself, from the perspective you had over the last weeks or months, is it being used to polish you or to pulverize you? Is it making you better or is it making you bitter? Is it being seen as a get to opportunity or a have to adversity? Are you feeling like you're getting sucked down the toilet as the market goes down the toilet? Do you feel like you're going with it? Do you feel like you're a victim of circumstance at the effect of circumstance? Or do you feel like you're at the cause, like you can create some something beautiful out of all this shit you've been handed? Because the shit that's been handed to you, it can either be used to stink up your life or to enrich your life, just like fertilizer, right? Fertilizer, at the end of the day, it's just stinky shit, right? We can either whine, sniffle, complain about it and feel like it's just stinking up our life and making our life shitty. Or we can say, how can I use this to grow my business? How can I use this to take market share? How can I use this to build more mastery muscle, to leave my competition in the dust, to bring more light into the darkness, to be able to bring more expertise, more leadership into the marketplace? How can I use this while my competition's dropping like flies and whining sim and complaining about the market and the fact that everyone's slow, you know, everyone's slow, everyone's going backwards, everyone's taking a, a financial hit, everyone's struggling. Many people I talk to, that's their sentiment. And for them, it's true. And for all intents and purposes, you know, if that's the truth that you want to hold on to, then you're exactly right. Everyone is struggling. And guess what? You end up being one of them because you normalize the struggle. You more normalize the adversity such that you feel like you're just one of many. And it's normal to struggle. It's normal to be sucked down the toilet in the twister of fear, in the twister of being a victim to circumstance. It's normal. And so that's one of the ways we hide. That's one of the ways we, you know, protect our inner child, coddle our inner child. And we don't take extreme ownership because we soften the problem by normalizing it, saying everyone's down, everyone's struggling, everyone's going backwards, everyone is taking the heat right now. So I'm just one of thousands. So I shouldn't be complaining or on the flip side, you know, I'm just going to have to hold my breath until this market shift ends. Well, you know, that might be great if you're in the pool and you want to hold your breath for a minute, but this market slowdown may take a little more than a minute. Chances are it's going to take many months, if not a few years. We don't know. Only God knows. What we do know is champions find a way to turn adversity into opportunity. Champions find a way to take that wind that is blowing all the other sailors in their boats against the rocks and to tilt their sail and to tilt their rudder, to shift their rudder and to tilt their sail, to harness the power of that windstorm, to propel them towards Dream Island while it's hammering everyone else, including their competitors against the rocks. The question is, are you seeing this adversity as an opportunity or are you seeing it as strife and stress and struggle and have to? And depending on how you see it is how you're going to show up in the face of it. The way you see it is going to determine how resourceful you are, how empowered you are, how resilient you are, how creative and innovative you are. It's going to determine the amplitude and the magnitude of the energy and the light and the love and the leadership you're bringing into the marketplace. You see, the marketplace doesn't give a rat's ass about your need. They don't care about your bills. They don't care about your bank account. They don't care about the need you have to make more money. All they care about is your seed, the seed of your leadership, the seed of your light, your love, the impact, the service, the solution you can bring to the table, the excellence for excellence sake you can bring to the table, the solutions no one else is offering. 
the competence, the dust on top of outstanding that you can bring to the table that no one else is bringing, the value you can bring to the marketplace no one else is bringing. Don't bring your need, bring your seed. And with the right value, with the right perspective, with the right attitude, you can turn this adversity into opportunity. We saw that in the 20s where there was more millionaires made in the history of you know, the new world in the 20s, in the Great Depression, where everyone else was struggling and going bankrupt and on the rocks financially. There were a rare few who turned that adversity into opportunity and they made millions because they took advantage of it. They took advantage of it because they saw it with new eyes, with new perspective. They learned to turn adversity into opportunity. And that's what I'm challenging you guys to do to see with the eyes of faith, to see with the eyes of your champion self, who's unstoppable, even in the face of these wins, you can turn these wins into propulsion to propel you towards Paradise Island while everyone else is getting hammered against the rocks. So that's the first step in the process. Without that first step, you're dead in the water. As Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Right. So I talk to people, even people, frankly, who join my, my program. I talked to a guy just recently who joined my program. And before we invite people in, because we only make offers to those we're 100 percent certain we can help. Before I even made an offer, I said to make this work, you have to show up 100 percent coachable, committed, resourceful and decisive. This ain't all lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows. We're talking about taking you from the struggle bus to soaring, to making freedom money, to be in the upper echelon of income earners on planet Earth. So to make this work, because we're building a thriving business on the front lines of capitalism in the real world, we're not talking hyper fluff or BS. We're talking real world results, real world outcomes. To make this work, you have to be willing to empty your cup so we can fill it with your dream. You have to be willing to show up all in, in it to win it because all in is the only way to win. You can't half-ass this. If you treat this like you're, you're casual, you'll end up being a casual T. So you've got to go full throttle if you want to get the 747 off the runway. This is certainly no exception. So I gave him those disclaimers and then he said, okay, I'm all in. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to show up all in. I'm willing to show up and do the work, show up coachable and committed. And then it came time to actually doing the work. And what we find occasionally, not all the time, maybe it's like one out of every 20 clients that I have, that they think I'm BSing when I give them those disclaimers. They think it should be easy. They think it should be lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows. They think that they're entitled to success just because they got the golden ticket to a proven formula. But if they don't apply the recipe for the champion level you know, chocolate chip cookie recipe, and they start messing with the formula. They don't put the temperature of the oven at the right uh, temperature. They don't mix the ingredients properly. They don't do the proper ratios. They don't put the dries in and mix the dries before they uh, put in the, the wets. And uh, they don't do the recipe as prescribed. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. And then they point fingers at us saying, well, you know, you didn't do it right. You didn't teach us right. You didn't, you know, you said this and we got X. And what is invariably behind that situation is that there's a mindset that does not take extreme ownership for one's life, one's business and one's results. And why am I saying all this? Why am I being transparent and sharing with you the fact that, you know, there are no guarantees. The only guarantee is if you keep doing what, you, what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. If you do your pushups, you're going to get stronger. If you sit on the couch eating bonbons, watching Oprah, you're going to get fatter and weaker. Same thing here. Our system works when you work it, but not everyone works it in spite of the fact that we have a champion level investment attached, because if you want to get champion level results, obviously it's not going to come with a chump level investment. You know it, I know it any more than you'd expect a genuine high-end Rolex for 50 bucks. That just doesn't jive, right? So why am I saying all this? I'm saying this because attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. If you come to the table, you're like, man, I'm eight months too late. I should have got on this eight months ago. Now, to, now everyone and their dog is clamoring after the same realtors. I'm too late. If you think that you know a proven method, a proven formula is not going to work in your market because you're in you know New York or you're in South Cal or you're in Seattle or wherever you happen to be, you think your market is different 
if you think that, you know, these top producing realtors, they already have their shit together. They already have their poop in the group. They don't need your help. If you think that, you know, the high wall of re resistance and resignation of these realtors is just too high to overcome. Uh, if you think any of these obstacles are the thing that's going to stop you, then you're right. You are right. So that's why it's so important to have the right mindset, to be willing to fight for your freedom and fight for your dream and to fight for your ability to overcome all your obstacles and all the challenges that may be in front of you versus fighting for your weakness, fighting for your excuses, fighting for your lack, limitation and scarcity. Because where your attention goes, your energies flow and results show. And if you're fighting for your weakness, guess what you get more of? More weakness. If you're fighting for your strength, if you're fighting for your dream, if you're fighting for your resilience, if you're fighting for your freedom, if you're fighting for the fact that you know you're made by greatness for greatness, God didn't make any junk, he didn't start with you. If you're fighting, fighting for the fact that you know you can do all things, like for me, I'm a Christian, I believe in my heart, my heart of hearts, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does that mean I can be an NBA, NBA black, uh, basketball player, even though I'm five, ten and a half, five, eleven and a half, rather, forgot my height, and I suck at basketball? Hell no, right? You have to bring accurate thinking to the table. What that means, though, is that I believe I'm always divinely guided. I believe as I surrender into my maker's hands, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so what that allows me to do is focus on the opportunity instead of the adversity. It allows me to focus on what I can do instead of what I can't do. It allows me to focus on who do I, who do I need to be in this moment to be my best, to be light in the darkness, to bring, bring glory to God by bringing my best to the table in every moment. And obviously, there's no such thing as perfection. We seek progress, not perfection. That's how champions roll. Perfection is the lowest standard because only God's perfect, right? We fall way short. But we can seek progress, not perfection, and seek the best version of ourselves. And that's really what it's all about. Being a champion is not about being perfect. It's about seeking the best version of ourselves and stepping out of our comfort com easy for me to say, stepping out of our comfort zone and saying, bring it on. There's a challenge right now, bring it on. There's a windstorm right now, bring it on. There's adversity right now, bring it on. Thank you for this challenge because I know it's there to serve me to my dream. It's there to serve me to the best version of myself. It's not a stumbling block. It's a stepping stone. It's not a setback. It's a set up. It's not happening to me. It's happening for me. Do you feel the difference energetically in the different perspective, the juxtaposition of those different perspectives? One makes you a victim of circumstance. The one, one, the other makes you a victor over circumstance. And that's what I want for you. But I can't put a gun to your head and force you to own that victor identity. You've got to own it for yourself. You've got to choose faith over fear yourself. And at the end of the day, it's a choice. The name of my company is Power of Choice Coaching for a reason. There's power in that choice. We're going to talk a lot today about the power of choice to choose your perspective, to choose the meaning you're adding to the circumstance you're facing right now. Because emotion always follows meaning. If you have a meaning that has you being a victim of circumstance, you're going to feel like a victim. You're going to have victim emotions like fear, worry, anxiety, doubt, inadequacy, frustration, disappointment, depression, and you're going to feel all a matter of lack, limitation, and scarcity. Emotion always follows meaning. So if you place a meaning on it that has you giving you your power away by placing yourself at the effect of circumstance, being a victim of circumstance, then you're going to have victim emotions that animate your action with victim beingness. It's not going to be the best version of yourself. It's not going to be the powerful version of yourself. It's not going to be the champion version of yourself. It's going to be the castrated version of yourself. It's going to be the limp and weak version of yourself. And if you want to win, you can't afford to play to, the, to your weakness. You got to play to your strengths. You got to play to faith, not fear. So why am I belaboring step one? Because frankly, it's the most important step. Without step one, all the other steps, frankly, are irrelevant because they're not going to amount to one iota of impact in your business and your life if you don't do step one. Step one is the most important piece. In fact, if all you took away from this training today was step one, you'll be light years ahead of where you are now if you don't do step one. 
So that is indeed the first step. Now, the second step is this. Focus on what you can control. Ignore the rest. You may have heard the serenity prayer that says, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change, the courage to do the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's a powerful prayer, isn't it? Why is it so powerful? Because it breaks things down into two camps, two categories, two buckets, things we can change and things we can't change. And the wisdom to know the difference between the two and the things that we can't change, we surrender into the Lord's hands. We have peace through surrender. There's serenity and strength through the power of surrender. So there's that one aspect of life that will invariably be inextricably linked to the fiber and fabric of our life because we are humans. We're not all powerful. We're not all knowing. We have lots of faults and frailties. And so when we come to the end of our humanity, we realize there's so much we don't know. There's so much we can't do. There's only so much time in the day. There's only so much energy we have. And so when we acknowledge our own humanity, we have an opportunity to let go and let God, to surrender those things we can't change into our maker's hands and say, I surrender this to you, God, because I just don't have any power to control that. There's no power to control this part of my life. There's no power to control the market. There's no power to control the rates. There's no power to control how many transactions happen in our respective markets. There's no power to control, uh, you know, what people say in terms of, you know, how they respond to our overtures. There's things we can do to influence them, but we can't control them. We can influence them, but we can't control them. So there's so many different things we can't control who's you know in power in terms of the government we can't control uh the the laws or the regulations we can't control so many of these different things but what we can control is our locus of control and that's what gives us the power of choice that's what gives us the the power to create something new and to turn adversity into opportunity and to take new ground and to take new market share and to kick ass and take names and crush it in the face of seemingly crushing times that's crushing most, you can be the one who's thriving in the midst of the desert. You can be the one who's thriving while everyone else is struggling to be surviving. So that's the second step in the process is focus on what you can control. And what you can control is your calendar in terms of planning your work, working your plan. What you can control is not just how many hours you put in, but what you put into your hours. I can't tell you how many people are making half as much money as they made last year. And yet they're only working 20 hours a week, 25 hours a week. And for the most part, it's because they just don't know what to do to make the phone ring versus waiting for the phone to ring. So they just kind of drift versus drive. They wait for the phone to ring versus making the phone ring because they just don't know what else to do. And they don't want to do open houses. They don't want to chase after realtors with fruitless toil to no avail. And they have the proverbial door slammed in their face. And so rather than going out there and working 40, 50, 60 hours with fruitless toil, they just drift and wait for the phone to ring. And that's why they reach out to us because they're sick and tired of being like that Ferrari in the parking lot, stuck in first gear, half throttle, just idling, waiting for the phone to ring versus making the phone ring. They're ready to get out of the parking lot onto the fast track and to take market share and to step up as the best version of themselves and tap the full potential and turn this adversity into opportunity because they know that anything less than that is settling for a second best life. So that's why they hire us is to get them out of the parking lot because it's not an easy code to crack like we talked about earlier. You can't just watch a free YouTube video, listen to a free podcast or read a free blog to figure it out. If you could, we wouldn't be in business for 17 years helping mortgage pros create breakthroughs. So the second step is really about getting clarity on the few things, the vital few things that push the needle in profit and performance in your business at the highest, uh, at the highest level, namely planning your work and working your plan as it relates to the two most profitable things you can ever do in your business, attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. And if you roll with us here on Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com, we teach you how to do that without cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts, right? Because frankly, that's doing it the hard way. So the first and most profitable activity you can ever do in your business 
is booking appointments with top producing realtors and identifying their pain points, their challenges, what keeps them up at night, and then prescribing a solution for what ails them such that they make you their exclusive. They put you on their speed dial and they send you all their business all the time as their exclusive lender. Now, a top producer doing 20, 50 plus transactions a year can easily send you one, two, three deals a month, not a year, a month. Many of you guys are settling for mediocre realtors because you think the top producers are prima donnas and maybe some are, but you use that as an excuse because you think, oh, they're, they already have their shit together. They've already got their marketing dialed in. They've already got their lender. They're prima donnas. They're mavericks. You know, they're drama queens, blah, blah, blah. And so often mortgage professionals hide behind this story, this disempowering story, I should add, that has them hiding from taking risk with top producers because it's easier not to take risk. It feels easier. It feels safer to go after the low producers because they're more open. They're more open minded. They're easier to get a hold of. They're easier to book appointments with. So they take the path of least resistance because they created a story that the top producers are unreachable or they're too much squeeze, not enough juice, and they're too much drama, blah, blah, blah. And they prove themselves right with that story. Whatever you believe to be true, you prove yourself right. The question is, is that a truth you want to perpetuate? Is that a story that's empowering you to the best version of yourself and a thriving business, especially in today's time when everyone's clamoring after the same realtors? Do you want to just go after the bottom feeders that are first and, and, first and most affected by market downturns versus least and last? Or do you want to go after the top dogs that are least and last affected by market downturns that are here to stay, that have the biggest data, database of past clients, who have the highest capacity to send you the most business more, most often, and who do, do the most marketing and have the best reputation and have the most amount of inventory and, and have the most amount of buyers to send you? You tell me, if you had a choice between the two, if you had the power of choice between those two options, the bottom feeders who are getting chewed up and spat out right now and getting their asses kicked and have no business to send you, or the top dogs who have the most capacity to send you the most business, you choose. If you had the ability to attract either or and to have them working on your terms, not theirs, which one would you choose? Well, if you have two brain cells to rub together and half an ounce of ambition, chances are you choose the top producer. Why? Because it's maximum juice with the same amount of squeeze. Now, even if it's a little bit more squeeze than a lower producer, if it's 10x the juice, does it not justify having maybe a 30% increase in squeeze? If you can get 10x the juice, of course, right? It's all about return on your time and your money and your effort. So I submit to you, out of the, all the activities you can be doing in your business, the most profitable is not doing five social media posts a day and confusing activity with productivity. Those are two totally different things. It's not going to open houses. That's doing it the hard way. It's not cold calling realtors. It's not uh, going to networking events. It's not buying a bunch of shit leads off you know, Zillow.com. You ch chances are you already know that to be true because you've done it and tried it and you know it doesn't work. It's having an attraction-based method. We're going to talk about that in a moment to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling. And it's about mining the gold from your database. If you already have uh, a database, if you've been in the game for a period of time, then you have literally a absolute gold mine right underneath your nose in your database. But if you don't know how to mine it, you're paying a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing, not knowing how to maximize repeat and referral business, not knowing how to get more of your happy clients to give you a five-star review, not knowing how to show up and shine online with a five-star reputation. So you become the only logical choice when people search for a mortgage professional in your market not knowing how to turn those rave reviews into red hot referrals, not knowing how to put an iron cage around your clientele so that they, they, they don't get poached by your competitors. See, you're going to pay a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing every single week, every single month, every single quarter, every single year that you don't know what you don't know when it comes to mining the gold from your database. So I submit to you, it only makes sense to make a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself so you can take that money off the table and put it in your pocket where it belongs. 
so you can take market share, so you can squeeze as much profit-producing nectar out of your database as possible, so you can maximize repeat and referral business and put an extra $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 plus in your bank account every single month that you used to leave on the table to your competitors because you didn't know what you didn't know, but now you know. And once you know, you really know, right? And you never want to go back. It's like, you know, once you come to the light, of the new insight, the new wisdom, the new skill, the new mastery muscle of knowing how to work smart versus just working hard with the best caliber, best quality leads you can ever get by referral and repeat from past clients and top producing realtors, you never go back, right? The moment you come into that light of insight, it's like you're, you've are you been in a dark, damp cave all this time. All of a sudden, someone flips on the lights and turns on the heat. It's a whole new world, right? You never want to go back to the darkness and the dampness. It's a whole new world. Living in the light is where it's at. Living in the light is absolutely where you want to be living. So that's the second step. Let's move on to the third step, shall we? The third step in upping your income in a down market is to stop chasing realtors and start attracting. Stop chasing and start attracting. It can be hard, mind you, to really adopt this posture and this positioning let alone the execution of it in the fine details when you know that everyone everyone and their dog is chasing after the same realtors, when you know that there's so much competition and everyone's clamoring after the same realtors and these realtors have lots of options. It's hard, especially if you're a newbie, but even for a veteran, it can be very difficult to adopt this attraction mindset versus the chasing mindset when you know that these realtors have so many options and their doors getting pounded down every single day with everyone in their dog who calls himself a loan officer, who's trying to make this overture and th that overture and offering, you know, this leads program and that marketing program and to pay for their Zillow so that they don't have to, you know, pay full price on their Zillow leads. They can have three different loan officers paying 3000, 5000 a month so that they have a shit ton of Zillow leads, so that even though there's a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets out of the, all those crappy leads, at least they're further ahead than not having it, right? And now they're in the guinea pig wheel of trading time for money on the time for money treadmill with a bunch of crappy leads, most of which don't convert because they just don't know what they don't know because they don't have someone like you. If you were to tr be trained by us here on Planet Prosper, you'd be able to have a completely different posture because instead of doing open houses and kissing butts and fluffing feathers and glad handing and you know all that bus butt kissing that we see happen out there, you're in a situation where you're going after the top dogs. And instead of needing 40, 50, 60, 70 realtors on your team to get to your income goals, all you need is like seven to 12 out of an ocean of realtors, I might add, right? You've chances are got thousands of realtors in your market and literally hundreds and hundreds of them that are in the top producer status doing 20 plus buyer sides a year. Even in today's market, even in today's market, there are hundreds of these realtors in your specific city that do that kind of volume, chances are, let alone reaching out to additional cities because our system is not constrained to just one location. You can use Zoom and target any city you want in any state or province you're licensed to do business. So that opens up a whole new world of possibility and opportunity. The sky's the limit, right? But you've got to get out of the butt kissing, chasing mindset, which means you have to have crystal clarity. Clarity is power. Who is your ideal partner? What does your ideal partner look like? Are they a prima donna or are they a cool cat that's a pleasant tree to work with? Are they humble or are they arrogant? Are they hungry to grow or are they sitting on their laurels in stagnation? Are they you know, upbeat and positive or are they dragging their feet in kind of this lethargy of ho-hum? What does it look like when you are aligned energetically, synergistically, that you have the right chemistry? What does it feel like when you got sparks flying and magic happening with these ideal partners? What's the chemistry feel like? What's the alliance feel like? What's, are they entrusting you to their clients and do they trust you implicitly or are they micromanaging you at every step? Do they empower you to do your job 
knowing that they do what they do best, which is the real estate domain. And then they get the best to do all the rest, which is delegating their weaknesses so they can focus on their strengths. And that's why they have you on their team to fill that gap, knowing that without the financing, the deal does not get done. Do they respect and honor you? Are they the kind of person that you would have at their barbecue, at your barbecue or at your birthday party or at your Christmas event? Are they kind of, are they the cool cat you'd chug a beer with? I want you to get connected to the clarity of that because the more you can get clarity on that, here's what we teach here on Planet Prosper at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. You can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. You can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. So that's the first key to attraction is you got to know what you want. Most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. The first step to getting and attracting what you want is knowing what you want. Could you imagine fishing? You go out there fishing and before you put a, uh, you know, before you, uh, you know, put the tackle on your line and the hook and the lure and all that, you just basically grab whatever line you happen to have already on there, regardless of what kind of fish you want to attract. And you just say, oh, I'm just going to go out and throw out whatever I put out there and see what I get back. Imagine how well that would work, right? What's the likelihood if you want to attract salmon and you have a trout lure that you're going to attract a salmon? I don't know. I'm not a fisherman, but the chance of getting a salmon is probably pretty slim to none. What's the chance of catching a fish that will only be caught with a worm if you're using a lure? Or what's the chance of catching a fish that hangs out at the bottom of the lake or the ocean if you're trolling on the surface? You see, you've got to have clarity on what you want to attract, number one, just so that you have intentionality and the power of intentionality working for you. But then it also plays into strategy. It plays into your strategy because your strategy needs to be aligned with who you want to attract. Now, here's what I know to be true. Low producers are going to be attracted to different things than top producers. And top producers are going to be attracted to different things than low producers. But here's what I know 100% to be true beyond that. Water always seeks its own level. If you want to attract a 10, you need to be a 10. If you want to attract a rock star, you need to show up as a rock star. If you're wanting to attract a top producer and you're showing up with you know, this wobbly in your knees energy with lack limitation and scarcity and doubt, and you're kind of stuttering and you're kind of wobbly in your language and your certainty is lacking. And this top producer is like listening to you vibrating on that frequency of you spitting out wobble words and doubting what you're saying by virtue of the energetic frequency you're transmitting. What's the likelihood they're even going to say yes to a meeting? Slim to none, right? So you want to attract a top producer. You need to show up like a top producer and speak with certainty. You need to transfer your certainty from your heart and mind to their heart and mind. And that's one of the things we teach our clients to do here on Planet Prosper is the words that work that get these realtors hot for what you got. So we have a formula for it where we get you crystal clarity on the kind of fish you want to catch because different critters require different bait, right? So there's a kind of partner that would be your ideal partner will get you crystal clarity on clarity on that because that clarity, like I said before, is power. Then once you have crystal clarity on that, then we have a reconnaissance tool, a rapid fire realtor reconnaissance tool that allows you to be like a sniper. And instead of using the shotgun and just throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping some sticks, hoping that you happen to, you know, find someone who fits that category. We have a reconnaissance system that allows you to build a realtor list of exactly that type of realtor doing that kind of volume, doing those kind of units who in many cases doesn't even have a preferred lender. We're even able to see that whether they have a preferred lender or not, whether they're actually recommending their own preferred lender to the client, or they're just leaving it to happenstance. Do you think that would play into whether or not it might increase the odds that you attract that partner if they don't even recommend anyone yet versus someone that they're doing five deals a month with, and they've been doing that for years? 
Notice the difference, right? One is a low hanging fruit, easy to be plucked fruit from the ground. The other one, you got to take a 24 uh, foot ladder and dangle from a 24 foot ladder and reach the highest branch on the tree to get the fruit. Why not go after the low hanging fruit first? So the reconnaissance system is important. And then you need an attraction system. It's what we call all cheese, no whiskers. So if you're playing into the metaphor of wanting to attract a mouse, if you're showing cheese, but there's some whiskers behind it, you're going to scare that mouse away before they even get close to the cheese. Why? Because they know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat, right? And they don't want to mess with the cat. They want to mess with the cheese, but not with the cat. So you need to have the words that work. You need to have the right value proposition. We call it the UVP unique value proposition that gets these realtors hot for what you got in spite of the clamor of everyone and their dog hammering down the door of these realtors. I don't give a rat's ass if they're getting hundreds of calls a day from loan officers. Obviously, it would help if I didn't because obviously it makes my job easier if there's less of a crowd. But still, nonetheless, there's lots of way to cut through the clatter, clutter if you have the right value proposition. So that's another reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us is to have that value proposition with a turnkey plug and play, what we call realtor attraction campaign. So all you do is load your list of top producing realtors into the campaign and bada bing, bada boom, you start booking appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter without doing a single cold call in many cases. And the other cool thing is we teach you the posture on how to have that conversation using the power of brevity. Because if you just show up and throw up with a data dump of why you're so great and why you're so good and why you're the best thing since sliced bread and how you got this loan program and that loan program and this gizmo and that gadget and blah, blah, blah. Guess what? The more you tell, the less you sell and the more you repel. So less is more. So we leverage the power of brevity with the words that work, that give them all cheese, no whiskers, to make it almost impossible for a smart, ambitious, growth-minded realtor to say no. And if they say no, we have ways to obliterate those objections powerfully without fluffing feathers, without ass kissing, but owning your power, your power of choice. And if they don't take the bait, you just go right past them. If they don't take the bait, you pull that cheese away and you bring it to one of their competitors. So there's what's called FOMO at play, fear of missing out. But the other thing we do is as we go deeper into the conversation with these realtors, we're getting more and more clarity on what keeps them up at night, where their marketing engine is losing steam, where they're leaving money on the table and their frustrations, their pain points, their ambitions. And so we identify the gaps, the gaps between where they are and where they want to be, the gaps that are causing them to hemorrhage opportunity to their competitors. And then, and only then, if we're 100% certain we can help them, and there's someone that we want to help, someone that we can help and we want to help, someone that is worthy of our gift, because you and I both know not everyone's ready for your gift. Not everyone's worthy of your gift. Not everyone is someone that you want to bring your gift to, true or not true, Right. You know what I'm talking about? Because some people, the prima donnas, the drama queens, those that are just, you know, super aggro or super arrogant, like, why would you want to bring your gift to that person? Why do you want to play the bitch to that person to be that person's, that, that realtor's bitch and to have to, you know, uh, pander to every women wish of some arrogant a-hole? Like, seriously, life is too short for that. So you get to choose who you bring your gift to. You get to choose who qualifies for your gift, who has the privilege of working with you. And you build such a stack of awesome that's custom tailored for them. It's exclusive. So they feel privileged to have the opportunity to work with you. VIP partnership program. So we teach you how to create that exclusivity, how to create that stack of awesome, how to create that VIP partnership program that gets them chomping at the bit to want to work with you, that makes you irreplaceable and indispensable such that they start sending you all their business all the time. They put you on their speed dial. They make you their exclusive. Can you see how that would make a difference? We're talking about flipping the script. So the realtor needs you more than you need them. How cool would that be, right? To be able to be in a power position where you now have the cookie, you're in the driver's seat, you're in the power position. And if they don't reciprocate, you simply fire them and replace them. Simple as that.
Does that make sense, guys? So that's how you attract. You don't attract by leaning into the girl as you try and kiss the girl and she leans away. You attract by being a champion, an advocate, to be a pleasing personality, to have such a value stack, such a 10 out of 10 value stack that the girl leans towards you. You don't lean towards the girl. The girl leans towards you. And then you decide based on based interviewing process whether or not the girl has all the qualities and characteristics that's worthy of a kiss back. You get to decide. You have the power of choice. Does that make sense, guys? So those are the three steps of upping your income in a down market. I know it might say, seem oversimplistic, but I kid you not, these are the three steps that allow many of our clients, even in today's crazy market, to be doubling and tripling their income in the face of hyper competition, in the face of rising rates, in the face of their, you know, rising interest rates, low inventory, hyper competition, margin compression, et cetera, et cetera. And while everyone else is whining, stimming, complaining about the market downturn, our clients are cranking things up. Our clients are taking market share. Our clients are leaving their competition in the dust. And the question is, what are you going to do in the face of this adversity? Are you going to let it kick your ass? Or are you going to start to kick some ass? Are you going to be a victim of circumstance? Or are you going to be a victor over circumstance? Are you going to turn this adversity into more stress, strife, and struggle? Or are you going to turn it into opportunity that allows you to soar? You decide. But again, to recap, here are the three steps to upping your income in a down market. Step one is see the adversity as opportunity. Rise to the occasion. Step two is focus on what you can control. Ignore the rest. What you can control is how many appointments you book with realtors each week. What you can control is getting armed and dangerous with a battle-tested and proven plan by making a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself so you're no longer having to pay the hefty tuition to the university of not knowing, not knowing how to attract these partners, not knowing how to cut through the clutter, not knowing how to stand out from the pack, not knowing how to mine the gold from your database. That it will always be a much higher tuition than making a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself. Planning your work and working your plan. You have control over that. Not just how many hours you put in, but what you put into your hours. You have control over that. Your attitude, your thoughts, your emotions, your actions. You have control over that. You don't have control over the market, but you have control over what you think about, what you feel, the actions you take, and ultimately that will influence the results you get. And lastly, step three, stop chasing realtors and start attracting. Stop chasing and start attracting. Start choosing the kind of partners you want to work with. Start making it a privilege to have the opportunity to work with you. Start building such a unique value proposition that they'd be freaking crazy not to want to work with you. You do that, it's going to change the game. And you're going to take market share. You're going to turn this adversity into opportunity. And you're going to look back and say, that was the turning point. Remember in 2022, when the shit hit, hit the proverbial fan and everyone was dropping like flies? I decided to step up. I decided to turn that adversity into opportunity. I decided to take full control of what I had control over and surrender the rest. To have serenity in surrendering the rest and having the courage to go after what I could control and to ask for wisdom, divine wisdom, to know the difference between that which I can control and that which I can't. And I decided to see myself differently. Instead of inter being interviewed by realtors, I decided to interview them. Instead of chasing them, I decided to set it up so they chase me. Instead of groveling for business, I decided to set it up so they're groveling for an opportunity to work with me, to have an opportunity to work with someone who brings business to them versus the average Joe L.O. loan leech mortgage parasite that just takes business. And because of those three steps, everything changed for me. I stopped worrying where my next, next deal was going to come from. I stopped being stuck in this roller coaster ride from hell up one month down the next, up one year down the next. I was up and to the right consistently because I started to drive my business instead of drift. I started to work on my business, not just in my business. I started to 
actually take the steering wheel of my business instead of being in the passenger seat, being a victim of circumstance. I decided to become a victor over circumstance and that changed everything. That was the defining moment, those three simple steps. So that's my prayer for you. That's my wish for you. That's my hope for you. And I hope it's your hope for you and not just hope because hope is great but it doesn't make for a very good marketing plan, right? Hope is great if you're in prison. It doesn't make for a very good marketing plan. So we want you to move beyond hope. So if you're in this situation right now where you know you need to get equipped to win, you know you're committed to taking your business to the next level, but you realize commitment is not enough. doesn't matter how committed you are. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a freaking problem, right? doesn't matter how committed you are. If you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, we got a freaking problem. So you realize it's not enough to be committed you got to be equipped. And if you realize you're unequipped and ill-equipped because it's not an easy code to crack, your company doesn't have it to give it. If they did, they would have already given it to you. You realize you can't just Google search it. You can't just watch a YouTube video to figure it out. And you're ready to get armed and dangerous. So you're rolling out the freaking tanks to the gunfight, not just wielding the butter knife. Then I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. On that call, you're going to get on the phone with me, one of my consultants. We're going to lift up the hood on your business. We're going to look at what's working, what's not working. Where are you at now? Where you want to be? If we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you will leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Does that sound fair? I assume and presume it indeed sounds fair. So if you're wanting to at least increase your income by $100,000 or more, and you're wanting to work smarter, not just harder, and you're sick and tired of being sick and hard, easy for me to say, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of doing it the hard way, and you're just ready to step up and tap into the best version of yourself and tap your full potential and start making freedom money. If that's you, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Keep in mind, you have to be 100% commissioned mortgage professional. You need to be licensed as a mortgage professional, and you need to have a compensation plan of 70 basis points or higher. So if you do not qualify for any of those, please do not book the call. If you do qualify, based on everything I've talked about, go ahead and book the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. I trust you got some value from our time together today. Let's get after it. Let's get after it. Let's seize the moment. Let's see this as a get to, not a have to. It's happening for you, not to you. And it's there to polish you, not to pulverize you. This adversity is there as a set up for your greatness, not a setback. So let's seize the day. Let's seize the opportunity and let's use it to have the best version of yourself show up. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.